voicing the adultery law archaic and saying that it violates article 21 and article 14 supreme court in its decision unanimously struck down section 497 of the indian penal code that makes adultery a punishable offense for men the apex court also declared sections 1981 and 1982 of the crpc which allows a husband to bring charges against the man with whom his wife committed adultery unconstitutional what does adultery mean adultery means voluntary sexual intercourse of a married person other than with the spouse the legal definition of adultery varies from country to country and statute to statute at many places adultery is when a woman has voluntary sexual intercourse with a person other than her husband at other places adultery is when a woman has voluntary sexual intercourse with a third person without her husband's consent Though the modern trend is to decriminalize adultery historically many cultures have regarded adultery as a crime section 497 of the IPC it defines the offense of adultery this section penalizes sexual intercourse of a man with a married woman without the consent of her husband it spells the punishment for adultery with imprisonment for a term which may extend up to 5 years or with fine or with both in such case the wife shall not be punishable as an abettor Section 497 of the Indian Penal Code criminalizes adultery by men but not by women. Why is a sexual act with the husband's consent legal? Adultery is viewed in a way that a man's lineage would be tampered with and the other male would be adulterating his bloodline by having intercourse with his wife. Hence the intercourse with the consent of the husband is not criminalized as he is aware of the lineage. Let us look at the background of the petition. The petition while seeking the repeal of section 497 of the IPC was filed by a non-resident Keralite Joseph Shine who termed the 158 year old law enacted by the Britishers as unjust, illegal and arbitrary and violative of citizens fundamental rights. Raising his voice against the Archaic law and saying that the law is against the fundamental rights, Joseph Shine challenged the sections 1982 of the CRPC which was drafted by Lord Macaulay in 1860 on january 5th a three judge bench of the supreme court referred the pil to a larger constitutional bench the bench had contended the provisions saying that they seemed quite archaic especially when there is societal progress in three earlier judgments in 1954 1985 and 1988 the court had upheld the provision coming to earlier judgments of the supreme court Yusuf Abdul Aziz versus the state of Bombay the court decided that section 497 did not violate the right to equality enshrined in articles 14 and 15 of the constitution Saumitri Vishnu versus Union of India 1985 in this case the supreme court threw the ball in the court of parliament by saying it is for the legislature to consider whether section 497 should be amended appropriately so as to take note of the transformation which the society has undergone In V Revati versus Union of India 1988 case SC dismissed the argument that section 497 was discriminatory the court agreed that a man seducing the wife of another was the most seen and felt evil in the society Justice Malimath committee recommendations suggesting a radical change in the law on adultery the Justice Malimath committee for reforms in the criminal justice system had recommended amendments to the provisions of the Indian Penal Code that disallow prosecution of women for the offence However the committee's report sought to end what has often been referred to as the gender bias in the law by recommending similar treatment of both men and women in such cases but the malimath committee report is silent on another controversial provision of section 497 which says that prosecution in such cases shall be initiated on the complaint of the husband of the adulterous woman here is the timeline of the adultery case in the court The Supreme Court heard the matter on adultery for 6 days and reserved the judgment on August 8, 2018. Let us look at the Supreme Court verdict. All the five judges concurred that the law which at a superficial level was skewed against men was actually anti-woman and based on the premise that they were the personal possessions of their husbands. The judges agreed that women were entitled to equal rights under the constitution and could not be considered as their husband's property to be treated as they liked. Chief Justice of India Deepak Mishra said any system treating a woman with indignity inequity and inequality or discrimination invites the wrath of the constitution and also mentioned that adultery in certain situations may not be the cause of an unhappy marriage it could be the result of it
Justice Nariman stated that this archaic law has long outlived its purpose and does not square with today's constitutional morality. On this basis alone, the law deserves to be struck down. Justice Chandrachud said the court has already recognized sexual autonomy and privacy of citizens, including women, as constitutional rights. These rights will be available to women inside marriages too. Justice Indu Malhotra said that Section 497 infringed on the right to sexual self-determination and privacy. The time when wives were invisible to the law and lived in the shadows of their husbands has long since gone by, she said. On divorce and suicide, it has been stated that adultery can be a ground for divorce but not criminal offence and that thinking of adultery as a criminal offence is a retrograde step. Supreme Court also added that if any aggrieved spouse commits suicide because of the life partner's adulterous relation, then it could be treated as an abetment to suicide. It would attract the scope of Section 306 abetment to suicide of the IPC. Now let us look at the arguments against the verdict. Delhi Commission for Women Chief Swati Maliwal disagreed with the Supreme Court judgment on adultery and launched a study on its effect on women. She said that the commission receives thousands of complaints from women whose husbands are in adulterous relationships and they have been abandoned by them. These women are left to starve and fend for themselves and their children with no support from the husband, she said. There is an opinion that by decriminalizing adultery, the Supreme Court has given an open general license to the people of this country to have illegitimate relationships while being in marriage and felt that the Supreme Court should have made the law gender neutral by criminalizing the adulterous relationships by men as well as women. The society has two sets of standards for judging the morality of men and women. Diluting adultery law will impact the sanctity of marriages. Making adultery legal will hurt marriage bonds. But in another dimension, the gender-neutral decision of SC will give more autonomy to women to decide their own affairs independently. Few model descriptive questions have been mentioned here. Do attempt writing a 200 to 250 words answer for each of them. Thank you.